Good evening, mga lagan. So, let's continue our discussion on um, structural design of one-story wood frame building in Canada. So, for today's topic, uh, as I mentioned from previous video, we'll be discussing on uh, um, loadings. So, gravity loads and lateral loads. So, for gravity loads, we'll uh, have dead load and then um, live load. Uh, Last time I said uh, we'll be designing one story, so I decided to just add a Nissan in floor so we can uh, uh, add the live load in the calculation and in the load combination. So we have we have our floor plan here. So I don't know. Uh, okay. So this is our floor plan. So the building. Uh, I'm just sketching the floor plan because I don't have a subscription for Autodesk so we'll just uh, use uh, um, drafting tools here so our building would be 80 feet right so let's highlight this one so the building would be 80 feet by 60 feet and then I added a small vestibule at the front this one here vestibule so we can calculate for the um snow drift so we can account for snow drift so we have uh the overall like to the top of the roof would be 18 feet this one and then we have a uh, two feet uh, parapet like along the perimeter and then uh, the vestibule would be uh, 20 feet by 15 feet and then 10 foot high and then we have our mezzanine here, which is 30 foot wide. And then we have a, so we assume that this will be open below. So we have, I just didn't include the stair, but uh, there will be a stair, of course. So what I had here, what I have here is uh, we have the, like this red line would be the beam at the edge of the uh, mezzanine and then two columns. So going back to, so again for gravity loads, we have dead load and then live load. So we have the, like, we will be uh, uh, including the live load for the mezzanine and then it's no load. And then for that vestibule, we will have this new drift and then panding. So panding in probably, there were, there were like um, case studies about uh, roof collapse and the reason was funding so um if it's like this one with flat roof so that's why i i i decided to use a flat roof so we can also include funding in the calculations and then of course for the lateral uh, we have wind load and seismic um i will try if we can include the lateral load if not if if we are short of time then we can discuss that in 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 next time for the lateral loads but i will really try to finish uh, gravity loads uh, in this uh, in this um, episode so for the dead calculation as i uh, showed you last time so i am using just a rough like calculation so um if you don't know the assembly the rough assembly at first like when you start the preliminary uh, structural framing then uh, you can just assume say if it's if it's wood uh, wood trusses um like insulated insulation you could probably assume like between 20 to 25 psf but if you know the assembly if if the architectural plan is ready by the time you start your design then you can just look at the different like um uh, roof assembly if there are like more than one type of roof or if like for the wall assembly as well, or floor assembly. Uh, since uh, this is a flat roof, so we have we have two options for the for the roof. So it's either we will have like a pure flat roof, and then just let the insulation like tapered to bring like the slope. If if your if your um, roof drain is in the middle, then you will have really thick uh, insulation at, along the perimeter, and then the minimum. Uh, rigid insulation thickness required at the very center where your um, um, rough drain is or 
what you can do so if this is your roof this is your trusses right sometimes the it is the insulation that is being sloped towards the center i'm basically this is just the center line of the roof this is the location of your uh, location of your um what we call this one uh roof drain so it's either tapered the or flat roof flat truss then tapered insulation or your other option is um you taper the truss say one half is to 12 it depends right and then your insulation would be uniform thickness so you have that options so it depends on what the rq wants or what he proposes based on the um, like uh, discussion with the contractor sometimes the, the contractor would dictate say we'll just slope the truss and make the insulation uh, the same thickness so it's cheaper that way which is uh, usually happen like most of the time that's the case if we have flat roof so if you have say rigid insulation then you, assuming this is a uh, um it's low uh, top cord for the roof truss and then um, say rigid insulation is a and then pre-engineered roof truss one and uh, if you have drywall ceiling then you can add drywall uh no below the insulation is the plywood sheathing so plywood sheathing original plywood say three quarter inch and then one one layer and then below that would be the pre-engineered truss so just one pre-engineered one unit you, you you get the idea and then uh, say after calculating like this at the others for the MEP, this is the collateral if you have it depends sometimes four sometimes five pieces it depends uh, like how many how many lights are are in the ceiling like all the duct from like for the mechanical so it really depends if it's like a restaurant where you see a lot of ducting on the roof then you could probably assume higher if it's like general like a like an office building then or a store then uh, very minimal uh, um, dark and lighting or probably more lighting but uh, um, sometimes i just use four pieces for the uh, like mechanical electrical plumbing sometimes five and then uh, and then you have the drywall the strapping if if the assembly shows strapping then just add if if none then you can just either delete this one or just put zero the final total load is 30 psf but when when you submit this sometimes uh, the truss manufacturer would ask for by the way the, the roof trusses uh, most of the time like 99 99.9% are pre-engineered so you will just prepare the roof framing plan then give it to the the contractor and uh, he will forward it to the trust manufacturer and uh, they will just uh, send you a sharp drawing for you to review and approve make sure that all the uh, trusses like layout uh, is the same as what you've assumed in your uh, design right you have to make sure that it is the same for example if if your if your truss span north to south and then of course the the, the the north wall and the south wall will be not bearing but when the when you got the sharp drawing from the truss manufacturer he spun the trusses from east to west so it's you know that's not what you assume in your calculation so you have to uh reject that sharp drawing so that's uh you have to make sure that um it is in accordance with your designs and specifications if you say roof uh, span should go this in this direction then the shop drawing should match that one otherwise you screw up your design
So for example, uh, sometimes the trust manufacturer would ask, okay, for for this roof load, 30 PSF, how much is for the top cord or how and how much is the bottom cord load? So most of the time the top cord is a little bit higher. So in this case, we'll just assume this is just an assumption. So for example, we have a 30 PSF roof bead load. So you could say So roof did load is 30 PSF. So you could say like 20 is for the top cord and then 10 for the bottom cord. But in your calculation, it's either you show this it either you show this uh, distribution on your plan or you could just say 30 PSF. And then most of the time the trust manufacturer can figure it out like uh, okay portion of this you see, they, they will submit the shop drawing anyway and uh, you can approve but sometimes they would ask first before they start the design okay how much is the top cord load how much is the bottom cord the load so you could uh, i mean for the bottom cord of course you have your your mep like your platinum it is uh, on the top bottom cord most of the time is uh, attached to the bottom cord and then your dry walls if you have dry walls if you have um strapping like two by four strapping you know like for your ceiling assemblies if you have drywall and then you have your ceiling channel uh, below so those are like bottom cord loads and then for the top cord loads you have your uh roofing membrane and then uh rigid insulation and then your um what we call this one your um roof sheeting if it's Three quarter inch plywood or one inch plywood, so it depends on your um, calculation. So we have figured out the did load already. So did load roof did load is thirty psf. Now for the roof snow load, for the roof snow load, say let's uh, say our location. Project location is in Grand Prairie. Yes, I mean Grand Prairie, so we'll use Grandi. So we use Grand Prairie for our location. So from last time's uh, discussion, we already uh, showed you how to get the snow load. Um, so let's go directly to jabacos.com. So again, jabacos and then 2015 in BCC, this one, in BC. 2015 and then roof snow load so for roof snow load so we have just write your name here Logan work oh this is the one story um, building so user values. So if you don't, if you don't, uh, if, if the location where your project is uh, is not listed in the uh, selected uh, towns and cities, then you can input the, uh, using the user values. Um, the query uh, is in the selected uh, location. So Alberta. Then let's go Grand Prairie. And then importance factor. Say this building is a um like a restaurant or um a store retail store and then below the mezzanine are the offices and then above or boutique or whatever and then above would be storage so that's our uh, occupancy or if this is like a like a restaurant then maybe mezzanine would be like a like a dining like exclusive dining 
you know, for your patrons or whatever, or party, party room. So let's say importance factor is normal, and then CB. Uh, it says here if CB is left blank, provide the dimensions in the roof geometry to compute CB. So you can have this, like you can leave this blank, or you can input the CB. And uh, for regular building. Uh, it really depends on the size, but uh, we typically use 0.8 there. For residential, uh, I think point, point 0.55, I think, for residential. So roof geometry. So we decided that uh, the insulation would be uniform in thickness. It would be the top core that will be slope. So say the slope is, say, one half. Uh, or 0.5 and then longer dimension so 80 our building dimensions 80 by 80 by um, 60 so the input here is in meter in meters is uh, 24 point 24.38 and then 60 feet in meter is 18.29 so that is your building or roof plan dimension so the calculation is on the right side right here this is flat roof so none is slippery and then um so your ground is no load is 2.2 and then uh, SR is 0.1. So as I mentioned previously, you can get this value from, if you want to calculate your like manually, you can get this value from the building code, which is, I will just show you like um, how to. So this is for, this is Alberta. This one, uh, Eritrea, this is Alberta. And then you go Grand Prairie. So in in Jabacos, uh, Grand Cal is no longer included there, but uh, it is in this table, uh, Grand Center, Grand Cal, Grand Prairie. And then this is the ground snow load, 2.2. And then this is the rain load. So this one, you go up, see here, is S, S sub S. So that is this ground snow load and then the rain, specified rain load. So going back to Java course. So the, the snow load for strength uh, ULS calculation is 1.86 this is the roof snow load this one is the ground snow load and then this is the roof snow load 1.86 it's usually smaller than the ground snow load and then the equivalent in psf which is 38.8 so we have we have the um So our roof snow load is equal to 38.8 PSF. This is the ULS and then the um, the SLS is 35. It's equal to 35 PSF. This is L, uh, LS, SLS. The serviceability limit state. So that is, we already have the roof snow load, a roof did load, and then we have the 
roof is no load. So again, for strength requirements, you use the 38.8. And then for the calculation for deflection, you use the 35.5. But I will uh, um, show you what I usually do. Um, when I, I when I calculate for uh, the roof trusses or roof like roof beams like that or a header, um, I normally don't use this one. Otherwise, you will have to do a separate calculation just to calculate for the deflection. So you'll just decide. For example, um, when you calculate for the so the 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 um, Deflection for total load is L over uh, L over to 40 and then for live load only is L over 360. So push it the other way around. Total load. Yeah, total load is 240, then live load is 360. So sometimes the ratio for the, uh, I'll just show you. I forgot to open the port A. So if we go to 40, so, oh, it's, uh, oh, this is for roof. So roof total load is 180 only. And then the um, live load is to 40. Live load is the um, snow load. So once you start the analysis, you will see um, the ratio on the, um, uh, the deflection say l over instead of l over 360 it will be l over uh, uh, 3 see 365 so if if the difference to pass the deflection criteria is really small then you already know that you assume uh, instead of or you use you use the load instead of 35 for deflection calculation you use 38 so you only calculate once instead of having a separate calculation for deflection and then a separate calculation for distance requirements. I mean, you can do it, that's the proper way, but uh, in, in in practice, we'll just like calculate once. So it's up to you. So we have, so we already have, we already have um, what we call this one is no load. We have roof drift load, and now we will calculate for the snow drift on the vestibule. So let's go back again to our floor plan. So on our floor plan, we have ten uh, vestibule is ten by 15, uh, 10, uh, fifteen by twenty, and then ten foot high, and then the um, um, the height above the Visible is 10 feet with 2 feet uh, parapet. So if we go to Java course and then you go here, it's no drift, uh, no uh, step. So that's a step like a different um, roof elevation. So let's click on this one. And then again, um, one story building. And then 
Lagan at work for the designer. So that's my YouTube channel. So you better uh, subscribe so you can uh, you will be updated. Just click the notification bell so you will be updated every time uh, uh, we upload the uh, new videos. So climatic data again, Alberta, then Grand Prairie, and then snow density, and then it says if left blank. Gamma will calculate as per clause 4.1.6.13. So usually I'll just leave this blank and then let the uh, program calculate for the uh, snow density. But if you think uh, this is crucial in your calculation, for example, if you are if you are somewhere near a um, near a like a coastal area where possible like you have heavy snow and then uh, the, the the weather gets warmer and then you will have uh, snow started uh, will start melting and then snow again then cold and then warm temperature so you will have a compact snow then uh, um, you have to consider that one so so for the upper of geometry, uh, 80 feet, what was the dimension? 80 feet, uh, again, is 24.38, 24.38, oh, uh, sorry. So again, so this is Alberta Grand Prairie, and then this is the density. You can leave this blank or uh, like I said, uh, you can uh, input the value um, if you think uh, the the snow the snow load. Uh, there's a bigger chance that the snow load is like compact because of that change in constant change in weather. And um, so for the roof plan dimension, right here the upper roof, this one, this is for the case one. So case one, basically it is the upper roof that causes the snow drift. So the wind, the wind is coming from this direction from the top and then right here. And then if this is, this shaded area is higher than this area here, then you have, you will have snow drift like accumulation on this side. So that is case one. So shorter dimension is um, 60, 18.29, let's just try that one, 80 is 23.38, 60 is 18.29. And then you have here height of parapet, which is two feet. This one, two feet. I will show you like if, if there's no parapet, I will show you what happened to the snow drift. But for now, we'll just input the, um, for now, we'll just input the parapet, which is two point uh, six one point six one. So that's the parapet. And then for the lower roof geometry, this is the vestibule. So roof step height, this one, from the top of the parapet to the uh, ridge line of your lower roof. Um, so that is 10, 10 feet, right, 10 feet. It's 3.05. So 3.05, and then the pitch is, it's the visible is flat, so this is zero, is slippery, no. Then rough parapet, if you select the CS is, um, CS is one. And then case two. So if this is case two, if the, if this shaded area, this is the lower roof, 
and then when the wind blows in from from south then you will have this no accumulation which it will be trapped right here because this portion here would be the upper roof so we will have a snow drift accumulation on this area so let's say the vestibule is how much 15 by 20 so 20 is 1 point One point two two four point five seven, and then uh, let's say there's no parapet on your um vestibule, so le let's just leave it here. Then source three, um, if the wind is in this direction, like uh, at an angle, and then you will have a snow drift accumulation right here. And it's, I don't typically calculate this uh, case three here. It's it's very minimal. It's, it is no drift at the corner. Um, in this case, uh, there will be no case three. It will be, it will be either case one or case two. So one point, so right here, this no drift is 6.238. And then the drift distance is XD, this one. XD is um, 6.958. And then at X is equal to XD greater than, uh, X is greater than XD, 6.85. Uh, it's 1.86 and then the balance no load is 1.86. So um, in this particular diagram, there is no uh, distance X like, from from the snow drift down all the way down to the um the balance uh, or the roof uh, snow load which is 38.8 or 1.86 kPa so like i said we will check what will happen to the uh, uh this is 6.238 if we'll say the parapet is zero see now it is 6.262 versus 0.61238. So if you have parapet, some of the snow will be tra uh, will be um, prevented from falling uh, by the parapet. So only a few, like a portion of it, would be left on the roof because of the parapet. So. If there is a parapet, it's 0.238, and then if there is no parapet, then it is 6.262, 0.238, and then at 6. Point. So what, like, if we draw that in in a diagram, so this is your upper roof, and then your parapet, and then this is your vestibule, and then this is 15 feet. And then your snow drift will be like that. So it will slope from 6.238 kPa down to 1.86. And then the distance, this distance would be 6.958 meters, 6.958, so 6.958 meters in feet would be 22, so 22.82 or 83 feet. So that's uh, 6.958 meters, but you only have you only have 15 wide uh, vestibule. So what happened is you will calculate what's the lowest, uh, like what's the height of this portion here at 15. So you will have to do a ratio and proportion. So. 
from there like using uh, using similar triangle so this is um 38.8 so this is 38.8 and then 6. Point, how much is this? 6. Point, so 1 6.23 kPa is 130.3. So this is 130.3. So imagine, imagine the the increase on the uh, snow load just because of the difference in height. Just imagine from 38 to 130. So almost like what 90, 92 percent increase, right? So our let's do another page here. So fifteen. So this is our triangle, right? And then this is the. So if this is fifteen, and then the total is twenty two point how much? 22.83 so 22.83 so that one minus 15 is this portion is 7.83 and then you project this one oh no So this is already um, this one would be the one thirty minus thirty eight one thirty point three minus thirty eight point eight. This is ninety one point five. This is the remainder. This is the remainder from here. Uh, so that is one thirty point three, and then that that uh, triangle is this one here. So the total here would be 130.83 but minus 38. So this is our triangle here. Uh, so that is 91.5. So that is 91.5. So by ratio and proportion, you can get this value y. So y is to 7.83 is equal to is equal to 91.5 over the total is 20 so the 22.83 sure why why is 91.5 times 7.83 divided by 22.83 so your y is 31.38 so 31.38 so your final so 31 your final uh, is no load if you consider if you consider the the bottom part of it which is 38.8 right so this one again is 130.3 and then this one would be the total a 15 foot mark would be 31 plus 38 so 31.38 plus 38.8 so this is 70.18 psf so that is your rough snow load trapezoidal because uh, the the drift distance is longer than the width of the parapet which is uh, 15 15 feet only so that is our is no drink right so let's uh, remember these values here now if you go um so we have we already have the so we already calculated for the uh, dead load and then is no load and then let's go live load 
So this is the live load for the mezzanine. So we decided, okay, the mezzanine would be, the building would be a restaurant and then the mezzanine would be uh, like a function room or something like that. So it would be an assembly, uh, assembly occupancy. So if we go to the National Building Code, Alberta edition, page 393. So let's go to the occupancy live load. So it would be under uh, assembly areas with or without fixed uh, in, uh, seats, including arenas, church, dance for dining areas. So we have these dining areas, and then we are um, anticipating that it would be like a function room, like lots of people would be on top of on the on the mezzanine, on the mezzanine floor. So we will use 4.8. So you have to select all your the, the actual uh, occupancy. So if it's like say balcony for a for a hotel, or if it's like an equipment area like a mechanical room, then it's uh, 3.6 or 75 PSF. And then uh, office areas. So like I said. Uh, we assume it would be like it's a restaurant and then uh, it would be a function room so it would be a, it would fall under assembly areas and then dining areas here which is 4.8 or 100 4.8 kilopascal or 100 psf um so so we already have so dead load is how uh, much 30 PSF. Uh, live load will be 100. Is no load is 30.8 and then is no drift on the vestibule. And then let's go funding. Now for the funding, uh, this will be a little bit uh, complicated. But this is how I usually do for funding uh, calculation. Uh, time check. It's already forty-seven. Um, we will probably discuss the funding load in the next video, but I will just show you like a quick, uh, quick um, uh, calculation of how it is, uh, um, how I calculate for funding load. So if you go, if you go to the climatic uh, table. Appendix C, six, uh, page six, 615. So 615. So you will use the one day rain, this one. So you, you don't use the annual precipitation um, or the 15 minute rain. You will use the one day rain, one in 50 year occurrence. So that is in millimeter. That is Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie is I think Grand Prairie is eighty eight. Grand Prairie, oh no, eighty six. So this is eighty six millimeter of precipitation. So oh no, uh, So again, this is the one day rain, one in 50 year occurrence. So this is what you will use. And then Grand Prairie, you project that one, this one here, 86 millimeter of rain in one day. So you have, so your, so let's summarize our loadings. So. To summarize our loading, so did load, right? So roof did load is equal to 30 PSF, and then floor live load is equal to 100 PSF, and then roof snow is equal to 
38.8 PSF and then this new drift would be this is 130.3 and then this is was it 70 70.18 70.18 so the so roof dead load is 30 PSF and then floor live load is 100 uh, roof snow is 38.8 and then this is the snow drift on the vestibule and then uh, funding so for the funding so our uh, our 1D rain one the rain is is r uh, one in fifty, but this is for one day. One day is equal to uh, eighty six eighty six millimeter. So we will do the actual uh, funding load calculation in the next video, but I will just show you. Um, like uh, the, the 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 initial calculation like for the for the area projection and uh, so it, like i said is r is 86 and then let's go to our roof so if this is the floor plan uh let's just create a new page and then insert pictures from five So this is our roof or floor like floor line floor line. So for example our uh roof slope would be or our roof drain is located at the center and then this one here. So say our roof drain is right here. So you have shall we say from from the edge from the edge this is like uh, this is your zero zero and then at the at the lowest roof elev elevation your roof drop by say um say three three inches or six inches shall we say this is minus six inches right there now in a roof assembly so let's do a cross section so you have your parapet and then this is your roof oh let's show we'll just exaggerate this look so it would be clear like that one so if this is the roof and then you will have you will have like a scupper here like your emergency like um, roof drain in case uh, the main roof drain will be clogged and then you have your roof scupper so from the very top so if this is your if this is your roof and then your scupper say this is from the from the oh no or you can have like roof scrapper like right at the at the top of your uh the highest elevation of your roof so say this is um uh i think you will uh 30 millimeter that's the that's the um height of the water when it would start to like flow was it 30? I think, yeah, 30. So 30 millimeter. So at this elevation right here, what you will do is you have the 86 millimeter 
precipitation, and then you multiply that by the catchment area, which is the area of your roof. From there, you can get the actual volume of water that can potentially um, cause a like a pounding on your roof in case the um, roof drain is clogged. So, so we have eighty six millimeter. So our our precipitation is eighty six point zero eight six meter. What is that in feet? Eighty six millimeter. In inches divided by twelve, that is point point two eight two feet. So this is your height of your water times the area that will be the total volume that will be collected, like uh, on the roof. So times eighty times sixty. So the total volume. Would be fifty six one three five four. So one three five four point three three you big fit right now we will see how much is this volume here but the problem is it is sloping like um it is sloping Oops. So it is sloping in this direction. So this one, this is only good if, like, you can calculate directly if, like, for example, this one triangular uh, area. If your if your uh, roof slope is basically this is your lower lower uh, roof line, this this red line here, and then this is your slope single slope. But the problem is we have also we also have we also have slope going in this direction this is slope in this direction is slope this way is slope this way so this calculation this cross section only applies only applies to this portion here right it only applies to this portion right here in this li this line here would be um if you do it in 3d it would be so oh. it would be like that on this corner here this one so we're only we are only talking about this area so that area would be like this one right so your lowest portion here at the bottom and then it will slope back to zero at the highest point of your roof like that so our roof area or volume would be would comprise of this triangular this one from this area and then plus four times of this one four times because we have we have this um, so we have this one one and then another one on this side and then another one on this side and then another one right here so 
basically one here, one triangular or this one triangular and then one like a regular shape or four, four of this and then one of this. So, um, we are only, we are more than an hour now. So we will just continue discussing this one um, in the next video. At least you already know, like uh, you already have the idea on how to calculate the um, the uh, volume. So like I said, the, the volume like um, captured from your roof based on the um, one day rain, you know, one in 50 year uh, occurrence, the total volume is 1354. And then we will calculate also what will be the uh, retained volume before the water starts to flow from the scalper. So we will calculate that one. What would how much volume? It could be it could be the total volume could be um it's have another uh, section. So if this is your roof. And then slope. So your your total volume, which is one three one three five four cubic uh, cubic feet, it could be I don't know. Like uh, we'll we'll see, but it could be only up to here. Or maybe it would uh, flow like overflow. It's like say the total the total uh, the total. Uh, volume accumulated would create this uh, so much like a uh, height above your roof but your scalper is at this elevation like flush with the with the top of your roof but we have to account for extra 30 millimeter uh what is called the capillary action i think or surface tension surface tension before before the um, water starts to flow out of the scalper so what will happen is if if our scalper is flush with the top of the or the uh, like at the perimeter you have to you you will add 30 for example the total height here is 60 millimeter above the highest roof line no so 60 but your scalper the water will start to flow at 30 millimeter so that means when you calculate for your funding load you only account for this volume so you subtract the total volume by the by the area which is 80 by 60 this is in feet and then times this one 60 60 minus 30 is 30 millimeter you convert that into um uh 30 millimeter converted into feet then you will have you will get the volume that would be uh, subtracted from your total volume accumulated in your roof so like i said we will uh we will take this this will take time calculating for the funding only funding funding load so um we will continue on this one uh, in the next video we will focus on um funding only and then how it is applied to your um, uh, structural elements, so your roof beam or your roof trusses, and uh, how I usually assume. I mean, I, I, I learned this uh, way of calculating, estimating the funding load. The, the, the proper way would be you apply the load, the, the structure would, uh, the structure would uh, as, as, the, as the water is accumulated on the roof, and then, um, uh, so once the water is accumulated on the roof, it will start the or it will cause the trusses and the supporting beams to sag further. So that extra extra sagging of your or deflection of your beam or of your beam would create extra depth for your um for your what we call this one for your water to 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 accumulate, right? So. If that's the case, you will have like I don't know how many iterations you can do, but uh, I I I learned this from I I read a book about it, and then I will show you how he applied the funding load and 
Uh, since then, I've been using the same procedure as well. So we will discuss that in the next uh, video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, uh, click the notification bell, and then we'll see you on the next video. Bye, Malagan.